Hi guys, we're Hi. back. Sorry for not posting anything or being very inconsistent with our vlogs. We've been busy. <clears throat> um, October 15th is coming soon and we wanted to make a vlog or a story time about why October 15th is such an important date for us in our lives. And um, for those of you who don't know why, we're gonna explain that in this segment of story time. <laughs> This month is called Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. What that means is that we're taking this time to remember all those beautiful angels that have passed away um, by either a miscarriage, a stillborn, or even an infant loss that didn't make it. Um, the reason we're talking about this is because we want you to understand that you're not alone if you're going through this. You know. You might be thinking that nobody understands you. It's not only for those who are experiencing it, but for also for those who have never experienced it and don't know how to approach somebody who has or is experiencing this. So um, I guess this is kind of like our coming out video where we kind of pour our heart out, explain what happened, uh, what went through our minds, how we felt. Two years ago, I was pregnant with our first daughter. I was pregnant with her for six months. Unfortunately, uh, she didn't make it. We didn't see it coming. You know, we passed our first trimester stage where they say that's the, the most risk you can have a miscarriage or anything bad can happen. We passed all that. So we thought, you know, we we're gonna have a super incredible pregnancy and we were excited to finally meet our, our baby girl. But that's not how it happened. It was May 2014. It was like a regular, it was a regular day for us. It started on a Monday where we went to our specialist appointment early in the morning. And a specialist appointment is where they check uh, your baby's measurements, their, how long they are, how much they, they weigh and everything. Everything was good. Um, her heart was strong. So it was just a regular day. The next day on a Tuesday, I felt something was different and what I felt was that something was wrong but I just didn't know what it was. So I woke up that afternoon after my nap and I told Abby, something's wrong, you know, I, I just don't feel her. And Abby was like, it's probably nothing, you know, it's fine, we have a regular OBGYN appointment the next day which is on a Wednesday. So I ignored it. And I just thought, okay, he's right, nothing's wrong. Wednesday morning came up, and we didn't have our OBGYN appointment until the afternoon, like around 12-ish. And I told Abby that early morning, I still don't feel her, something's wrong, I know something's wrong. And he said, don't worry about it, we're going to see the doctor soon when we get to the appointment. And he told me, just take a nap, and I'll wake you up when it's time to go to the appointment. So we lay down in bed, he was watching TV, and I usually, I love feeling her. She was very, very hyper and very like active in my belly. So sometimes when I poke her, like when I poke my belly, she will poke back. And I constantly did that when I was laying down, and she, I didn't feel her move not one bit. So I couldn't sleep, so Abby told me to eat um, right before we, we go, because I haven't really ate much. So and eating normally stimulates the baby moving around. So I decided to eat soup. You know, I ate it all, I was, everything was fine. After we finished, after I finished eating, we got in the car and we're heading on the, to the road. I had, let me tell you, I was already six months pregnant. I passed the morning, the morning sickness stage. So as we're getting, as we're heading to the doctors, I told Abby, I yelled to him, you need to stop the car, you need to stop the car, I need to throw up. So he's pulled over on the curve, I opened my door, and I threw up. So which, you know, that made me feel like something's definitely wrong. But I didn't want to worry him more, so I just stayed quiet and I said maybe it's just something normal. So we got to the doctor's appointment, and we're waiting there, and in my mind, you know, I just want to get this done, and I want to be able to hear my, my, my daughter's heartbeat because the OBGYN is usually just to hear the heartbeat and to have any, if you have any other questions, make sure everything's okay. 
So they finally called their name and we went to the, or walk into the room and my heart is beating fast. I lay down and the doctor says, hi, how are you? Everything's good. He brings the dobbler out. I lift up my shirt and you know, he's trying to find the, the heartbeat. And we couldn't find it. All you can find is my heartbeat. So the doctor decides to make a little joke saying, ha ha, she's probably hiding. And we all laugh, you know, we giggle. It was a nervous laugh. I wasn't even looking at the actual dobbler that he was putting on her stomach. I was looking at his facial reaction because normally it's a telltale sign if he looks worried when he's looking and looking for a heartbeat, something's wrong. So my heart was racing at 100 miles per hour and I just saw, I would look over at Jocelyn and I would see her like super, her face was so pale and white and she was just, she knew something was wrong. Cause normally we would hear her heartbeat immediately as soon as he put the dobbler on it. So then he decided to tell his assistant, his nurse assistant to bring out the, the ultrasound so we can try to see where she is and what's going on. So we're waiting for the ultra, the the ultrasound to come in, the sonogram, and he and he finally brings it in, and we're ready to see what's going on. I lift up my shirt again, and I see I see her, but and I'm looking at the the screen, and I don't see. Her. She's not moving. I don't see her moving or anything like that. Normally, when doctor presses on the stomach. She moves a little bit and she wasn't moving at all and when we saw that I just when I saw a still picture of the baby I was just like I like my heart dropped and I just immediately looked at Jocelyn and she was crying and that just it broke my heart and we I started crying too and I was just like he doesn't even have to finish his sentence because we already know what's coming, you know? I think at that moment it was like the hardest Thing for me when he told us that there was no heartbeat that we would have to go and you know Jocelyn would have to give birth to the baby you know um, we were sitting in the waiting room and it was just non-stop crying and I didn't know how to consolidate her I didn't know what was going through her mind I didn't know anything you know I, 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 I myself felt like you know an empty hole or, or like my heart was ripped out of my chest. I could only imagine what she was going through when the baby was inside of her. And she had to deliver it afterwards and it was just, it was the worst moment of my life. I can honestly say I never felt so much, so much hate and so much, you know, I, I damned everything. I hated everyone. I didn't want to talk to nobody. I, did. I just wanted to know what had went wrong. It's hard. It's hard and I can just picture it like if it was just yesterday when I went to the appointment and I went through every process and the moment that he says, it was hard. It's like one minute you have something that both of you created and then the next it's not there anymore. It's like, we don't know what happened. Like you ask the doctors and they're like, we don't know. We won't be able to tell till you deliver her. And it was crazy. We just, we lost faith in a lot of things that day. Mostly I did. I just, I, I didn't understand why something bad was happening to two good people. So. So after the doctor had told us that she had no heartbeat. Immediately, I burst into tears. I could not hold it in. Started crying like I've never cried in my whole entire life. Okay. So once we were, we finally got a room for her to deliver the baby, um, it was just like a very eerie moment. I felt like the clouds got dark all around us. The way she looked at me it was like, she wanted me to consolidate her to, you know, find out answers why this happened. And I had no answers for her and I felt so helpless. And as a man, you don't want to feel helpless. And that moment to me was the worst. The way she looked at me, I, I can never forget the way you looked at me. 
I've never had somebody look at me that way. And to this day, every time we celebrate the anniversary, it's like I look, I have your your face embedded into my into my thoughts every time. It was like some somebody was drowning and you were standing there and you couldn't help them. That's how how she was looking at me. Once they injected me to be induced, you know, it took about 12 hours. So to the next day, um, I was in labor. And she actually gave birth to the baby. It wasn't like she was pushing. It wasn't, since it was my first time, you know, being in labor, giving birth, I did not know exactly what I was gonna be feeling like what my body was gonna tell me. My OBGYN, she broke my water on purpose so I could finally give birth. She was telling me to push and push. And I tried and I tried and I just didn't feel anything. Instead, I felt like I had to urinate. And I told her I need to go to the bathroom, I need to go to the bathroom, I need to pee, I need to pee. And she said, okay. So she, she they helped me go to the bathroom and they lift up my, my gown it's called a gown. They lift up my gown and I tried squatting and I just could not pee. Some of the cords got tangled up on me so they were trying to get it around my around my legs and arms. So as they're trying to pay attention to that, I felt like it was time. So that my little girl was coming and I was not in bed and I didn't think I was gonna make it. And I yell out she's coming she's coming and I can't hold her and I tried catching her and I'm standing up and I try catching her and she drops she drops on the floor I couldn't catch her that was that moment was unexpected I was actually standing by the door holding the door for the nurses and for her so that they're able to go to the the bathroom with her and when that happened I just I froze I started crying she started crying it was the the nurses picked her up really quickly and took her away and I just after that I just locked myself in the bathroom and I screamed and I cried and we had our families there with us and I just I couldn't even look at them in there eyes my mother my sister who have they went out on a shopping spree and brought duffel bags of clothes for her expecting her to be for the baby shower they had this this like face on them like they felt sorry for us but they didn't know how to approach us how to talk about it with us and at that moment I don't think we wanted to talk about it with anybody my social skill was non-existent at that point then um, the nurses took her to the back room and I guess cleaned her up and they asked Jocelyn if she wanted to to see her. I don't recall if you said yes the first time or no. I think you said no at first and then you changed your mind. I said no. I said no because I had my mom and I had you in the room and both of you were saying don't look at her, it's gonna make you even sadder. Don't, don't. So I said no. After maybe an hour, I decided to tell the nurse I would like to see her. Just just to say goodbye. Just to know, you know, just to show her that I love I loved her and I will continue to love her no matter what. And um, the nurse dressed her up. She dressed her up in these little like Hospital baby clothes. They're made. They're handmade out of cro 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 crochet. 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 A little hat and a little um, boot, uh, boot, booty, booty shoes. They took photo shoots of her and everything. Um, it meant a lot. When they brought her up, my heart was beating so hard. The nurse was holding her, wrapped in a blanket, and my heart was it's just beating so hard um they gave her to me and i hold her i remember just staring at you cradling her and uh, 
I didn't want to see her. Cause I just, I was so hurt. I didn't want to, I didn't want to see her. I was so sad. I didn't. I was sad. I was full of rage. I didn't know what to do, what to say. Like, how would I react if I saw her? And I was just looking at, at Jocelyn cradling her, and she was covered up in a blanket, so I couldn't really see her. But um, her mom saw her, and she's Jocelyn obviously saw her, and they said that she kind of looked like me, and I was just. I balled up and I just started crying even worse because <laughs> this is why I didn't want to do this video. It was the worst day of my life and to this day there's not one day that tops that day. <laughs> Having the joy ripped out of you. Having something that you created with somebody that you love. <laughs> disappear you know from this from this world and not having an explanation because to this day they couldn't tell us what had went wrong I think the hardest part after this was returning back to work you know? just going back to our normal lives is the hardest part like if nothing happened you know trying to you know make your way back into society and, and be a normal person after a loss like that having to explain it 50 billion times to 50 billion different people who ask questions and want to know why you took a month off of work, uh, want to know what happened, they want to comfort you and you just don't want to take their comfort or their consolidations or their condolences. After going through all that, um, which he did end up seeing her for a few, for a few seconds just so he could know how she looks. Um, we, we had to give the choice either to do, to bury her or to cremate her. And we decided to cremate her. You know, uh, it was a beautiful ceremony. We went on a boat. Okay, it was a beautiful ceremony. And after we decided to go to the Reception. The reception. It was kind of like a, a wake. What we did yeah, at, at her mom's house, where everybody came over and kind of just gave us their prayers, and it was just family really that got together and kind of to give us hope and uh, make us laugh and try to change our mood a little bit, which I, I think that was very nice, and we don't give enough credit to um, our family who has always supported us. After all that, I did have po uh, postpartum depression. I went through a hard, hard time. Right after, right after we lost her and we went through everything, we actually lost in touch, lost in touch with a lot of our friends. We barely spoke to our family members. Um, we even deleted all of our social media uh, accounts everything we like disappeared out of the world we didn't actually come back into social media until you were pregnant again even our our relationship was at the edge of breaking um yeah Jocelyn was always depressed crying and me I was always trying to keep my mind busy by going to work and doing extra curricular activities it was tough it was tough um trying to get her out of that hole that she digged herself in and buried her. I lost weight. She didn't want to eat. It was hard for me to kind of hold us together and kind of assure her that we can keep trying and keep trying. And we went through kind of a block where we were trying and nothing was happening and it wasn't happening fast enough or as fast as we wanted it. And we thought something was wrong with me or something was wrong with her. And in reality, it was just a psychological barrier that we put on each other after we lost Madeline because we were scared of that happening again to us. And we didn't get pregnant for five or six? Five months. Five months. At five months after losing her, we end up uh, getting pregnant again with Ezra. And that 
in itself with its own trauma and we were always constantly worried and every little hiccup or every little beep or every little silent night that we had we had to go to the emergency room to make sure that he was okay that he was still his heart was still beating it was the second pregnancy wasn't any easier than the first pregnancy especially after losing madeline the second pregnancy i felt was harder we were living on the edge kind of like walking on eggshells because we were always worried you know she threw up too much we wanted to know why and and when it was gonna stop and if it was normal you know if the baby didn't move for a day or, or a night we got up in the middle of the night and went to the emergency room and had an ultrasound done and it was very very hectic and very hard on us you know to this day we still have very strong feelings about what happened and I don't talk about it ever I don't like talking about it Jocelyn always tries to bring it up and she has her moments where she cries and cries and cries and thinks about her and I just I'm the type to kind of avoid it it's been two years now and still like he said still to this day I bring it up maybe every two months right pretty much almost two every two months and I have my moment where I'm depressed again and I feel like it had just happened I'm so grateful to have Ezra I'm so grateful and you know I wouldn't want to change any of that we're lucky to have our miracle baby and we're super 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 happy and grateful that he's with us and you know this all happened we are for a reason for I a feel reason. like this happened for a reason like, it sucks to say, but I feel like we lost Madeline in order to gain Ezra. And the kid is the brightest little boy I've ever seen. And he just brings so much joy to us, and it's crazy how I think back, and I'm like, that could have been Madeline. And I always think about that. That's one of the main reasons why I don't, I don't like talking about it, because when I look at him, I feel like, you know, that this could have been Madeline, or Madeline could have been a, already his big sister, you know, so. It's gonna take time, and I don't think we'll ever really forget, but I feel like one day we will get over it. But never forget. And grow, go, grow through it, and it'll make us stronger. Um, we want you to know that you are not alone. You have support of your family, your friends that care about you, and there's others that experience the same exact thing as you. And just because you haven't experienced it yet, doesn't mean that you can't, that it won't happen to you. Sometimes it happens. And there's sometimes there's explanations for it, sometimes there isn't. No. If you guys have any questions, um, if you guys want any tips or advice, or even to just vent and and find someone that can confine, that you can confine in them. You can always count on us. You can send us an email, anything you want, a message, and we'll be gladly to help you and reach you, reach to you. So thank you for taking your time and hearing our story. And hopefully you can see, and hopefully this helps you. Hopefully this helps you move along and know that this is not the end. Hi, my name is Brandy, and I had a miscarriage. I'm Nina, I had three miscarriages. My name is Katie, and I had a miscarriage. My name is Courtney, and I had two miscarriages. My name is Kat, and I had two miscarriages. My name is Jessica, and I had a miscarriage. Find out more about the campaign, hashtag I had a miscarriage, go on Instagram and follow Dr. Jessica Sucker, a psychologist specializing in women's reproductive and maternal mental health, and creator of the hashtag I had a miscarriage campaign. Links are below. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.